How much do I weigh? And how much do you weigh? Nope, incorrect. In aviation, you weigh a different amount. How much? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Grant and welcome to the sixth class in the Mass and Balance series. Today, we're looking at the standard masses of passengers and bags and how much people are assumed to weigh based on the type of flight and the size of aircraft. Now, unfortunately, in the ATPL subjects, there are a few subcategories of topics which are boring. Standard masses, unfortunately, is one of these. The best way to learn these is just through sheer repetition by using the question banks or flashcards. The good thing though, is once the information's in, it's pretty much well in. The questions are simple memory exercises and it should be some simple questions if they come up in the exam. Okay, so standard masses come in the three forms. We have crew, passengers, and bags. So for crew, we can either use the standard masses or we can actually weigh the people. We can do either or, there's no restrictions. And any weights that we do include any hand baggage that we take on with us. So for flight crew, our standard mass is 85 kilograms and for cabin crew it is 75 kilograms. This is mainly due to the old rules for having to carry all the physical manuals and things like headsets and stuff like that. That's why there is the big difference between the two. Next up we have the standard masses for the passengers and um, it varies a lot on whether you're in a small or a large aircraft, you're male or female, how many seats are in the aircraft, but we'll just go through it slowly. And again, repetition is key for this sort of stuff. So a few points before we go into anything. Infants are considered younger than two years old. Children are older than two, but younger than 12, and adults are over 12. Any infant is considered to weigh zero kilograms if they are sat on the lap of you know, their parent or guardian, for instance. If for any reason they are sat in a seat of their own, they weigh the same as a child. They're considered to weigh 35 kilograms, just like a child. So infant and children are easy, zero or 35 if they have their own seat, essentially. Then you get into the breakdown of how much adults weigh according to standard mass. So again, you could always just weigh everybody, but using the standard masses is thought of as a lot quicker and you don't have to weigh every single person. So for small aircraft with one to five seats, for men or male, 104 kilograms. Female, 86 kilograms. For a small aircraft with six to nine seats, male, 96 kilograms, and female, 78 kilograms. Small aircraft, 10 to 19 seats, we have 92 kilograms and 74 kilograms. As you can see, the weight is reducing. The standard masses are reducing as we go down. This is because we really have to be overestimating in small aircraft because big weight changes can make a lot of difference in inaccuracy in the weights. So it's better to be overestimating everything and you know correcting for that bad condition. And then hopefully people weigh less than 104 kilograms and you're all good. But for small aircraft, weight is a bigger issue. So you overestimate everything to make sure that it doesn't become an issue. For large aircraft, we've got uh, two brackets mainly. We've got 20 or more seats or 30 or more seats, but each of them is split into 20 or more seats standard flight and a 20 more or more seats holiday charter. Uh, for larger aircraft, there's two categories. There's 20 or more seats or 30 or more seats. And then within those, there are um, holiday charter flights which have a slightly different weight again. So normal 20 plus person flight, males 
standard mass, 80 kg, and female, 70 kg. For a holiday charter, it's slightly less, it's 83 kg, and female, 69 kg. In a 30 plus passenger aircraft, all adults, male or female, 84 kg mass. And 30 plus seats holiday charter is 76 kg, all adults. This is the one that we use day to day, actually in the airlines, 84 kg, because we have more than 30 seats. It's not a holiday charter. 84 kg. Okay, so people, crew, next up is bags. Standard masses for bags can only be used on aircraft with more than 20 seats. If it's 19 or fewer seats, you have to actually weigh the bags, but you will find most airlines actually weigh the bags because it gives you a more accurate figure and you can optimize your performance and get uh, away with burning less fuel. So the standard masses on aircraft with 20 or more seats depend on what type of flight you're doing. So you're doing a domestic flight, a European, there's also other, which I'm not really sure what that covers, or an intercontinental. So domestic flight, you have a baggage limit of 11 kgs in the standard masses. European, 13, and intercontinental, 15. These are your standard masses, but again, most airlines will weigh the bags to optimize the performance. While on the topic, the exception to this rule is if you use something called a fleet average program. And what that is, is if an airline has all the same type of aircraft, all the same model, all the same type, all the same model, and all with a very similar center of gravity positions when we measured them initially on entry into service. And the fleet average program allows you to just weigh a portion of your fleet every four years and then apply the results across the whole fleet. This obviously saves money because it means that you have to only take a few aircraft out of service, weigh them and apply the results across the whole airline but the downside is you don't get accurate weights for every single plane. The fleet average program allows you to push back the weighing of every aircraft to nine years. So if you're part of a fleet average, you have to be weighed, every aircraft has to be weighed every nine years, but every four years, only a portion of them have to be weighed in order to apply the results across the whole board. So to summarize, we have standard masses for crew, passenger bags, and the aircraft mass. If you use that fleet average program, you're essentially using a standard mass applied across the whole fleet. So for crew, we've got flight crew, 85 kilograms. Cabin crew, 75 kilograms. Simple. Passengers, this is the big one. So we've got small and also large aircraft. From there, we can break it down into one to five seat small aircraft, six to nine, and 10 to 19. We've got weights for male and female, and for one to five seats, the male is 104 kilograms, female 86. Six to nine is 96, 96, and 78. And 10 to 19, 92 and 74. For large aircraft, we've got four breakdown. 20 plus, 20 plus holiday charter. We've got 30 plus and 30 plus holiday charter. Again, they come in male and female. Um, male for 20 plus is 88, female 70. For a 20 plus holiday, it's 83 and 69. 30 plus, this is what we use every day. 
we combine male and female into a standard passenger mass of 84 kilograms. And for holiday, it drops to 76. In terms of the age breakdown, we have infants as being younger than two years old. We have children who are younger than 12, but obviously older than two years old as well. And then we have adults who are older than 12. Children are considered to weigh 35 kilograms and an infant is zero kilograms because they're sitting on an adult's lap. Unless they are sat on their own, then they're considered a child and weigh 35 kilograms. Bags next. We have to weigh every bag if we have 19 or fewer seats. If we have 20 or more seats, we can use standard masses for the bags. If we're using standard masses, we break them down into domestic flights, European flights and intercontinental flights. For domestic, the standard mass is 11 kilograms, European is 13, and intercontinental is 15. For the aircraft mass, we have to weigh it on entry into service, then every four years after that. This is unless it's part of a fleet average program, in which case it is nine years.